not going live. Okay. Welcome to the Money Making Money podcast. Right on. Uh, with our hosts, George Applicano, Albert Seha, and Mark Anderson. Why don't you guys introduce yourselves? Go ahead, George. Give you a little you history of, of yourselves. Okay, you sure. Um, so welcome to the Money Making Money podcast. Um, and I think it should be Mark the Great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the yeah. Great. Yeah, absolutely. There we go. Right? Like that? Um, all right. <clears throat> so my name is uh, George Apicano. I'm a wholesaler out here in uh, in the Phoenix area. And i um, been doing wholesaling for about two and a half, three years or so. And... Uh, Prior to that, uh, I was doing uh, home mortgages, right? So home loans and and uh, doing all that, right? Um, come to find out, while I was doing home loans, there were uh... sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, you ruined the sound, man. It was like Sip right that coffee. No, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're stay on it for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, just focus on that right now, right? <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so uh, did mortgages for twenty years. Um, noticed towards the end of my towards the uh, my change in my career um, that the I was starting to do a lot of loans for people who were doing. Um, uh, lease options and um, and uh, they were changing their hard money loans into traditional um, traditional loans and so what had happened from there was is that I started to dive a little bit deeper into why these were happening I, I was looking at the end um, the end investor and what they were making on those deals and I was like that's interesting so started to dig a little deeper um, found out wholesaling was part of how they did that. And was the basis of it. Um, and uh, read a book called Rich Dad Poor Dad. Once I started that, that started my career in wholesaling. So um, just to kind of give you an idea. Awesome. My name is Albert Seha. Uh, I've been, uh, I'm actually a licensed real estate agent. And uh, I've been licensed real estate agent for about f- going on five years. Uh, prior to that, I used to, was in the lending industry. Uh, that's how I know George. Um, and did that for about 15 years, um, and uh, been doing also the wholesaling aspect of it for about two years, a uh, year and a half, two years, mm-hmm. um, and uh, podcasting as well. Podcasting, <laughs> ah. yeah, <just> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so I've been uh, you know been in the industry for a while and uh, made the jump to the real estate part about for about going on five years now. I'm Mark Anderson. Uh, I'm fairly new to the real estate game. Um, I've been in the mortgage industry for about 15 years too. Uh, I uh, ten of those have worked on and off with Albert directly uh, in the mortgage field. Um, just recently quit my job, obtained my real estate license, and uh, joined these guys and their forces into uh, help building up uh, wholesale and the retail part of. Uh, a real estate team. Well, welcome. To, we are welcome to. We're more than happy to have you. Okay. And, <laughs> and welcome the, to the team. That's not a robot, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. And and you're going to see the growth, right? Yeah. I, I want to yes. point that out. That's all. Yeah. It, it, this is great right. because yeah, we yeah, have right. somebody that's starting off right now and, in this business, and you, you know, we'll hopefully. See. Yeah. Um, you'll see what kind of growth that we have and, and ha- successes that he's having, some of the things that he's going to learn. Obviously, it's going to be a lot. And, um, you know, and, and we're going to share all that success, man. Exactly. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Looking forward to it. So with the podcast, uh, each episode we have, uh, we'll pick a certain topic within uh, the real estate game, uh, mainly wholesale. Uh, this uh, episode we are going to start with, um, as a beginner, um, how – where do you start with wholesaling? Okay. Um, do you want to start start off? Sure. Uh, well, <coughs> the first step is knowing, I, I mean, reading, doing a lot of reading on the wholesaling. Okay. Uh, so one research. Of the great, research, yeah. One of the great books uh, that uh, George mentioned or, yeah, George mentioned was the, the Think and Grow Rich. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Um, that one too. Yeah, that was a great, that's a great book. But the other one was Rich Dad, uh, Poor Dad. Dad, Poor Dad. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I've read a few times as well, as well as thinking grow rich, but definitely get uh make sure that's something that you want to do 
Um, we do get a lot of stuff uh, from the gurus saying, you know, come to the, these events and you'll get rich in the next couple of days. Yeah. You know, it's, <laughs> a, it's a hustle and it's, a, it's hard work, dedication. Um, but, um, yeah, do, do, you know, do your research on wholesaling. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about, you know, what it consists of. But, you know, definitely we will be talking from our experiences. Uh, do you you know do your research on it and see if it's something that uh, that you're willing to go and get into? So from my point of view, right? So I, I start off, um, right? What is wholesaling, right? What yeah? What is that, right? Uh, most people, it's a term, right? But um, um, I'm going to give you guys what it actually means. It, if you guys look up, uh, you know, go to any search engine or whatever, and just put arbitrage. Uh, it's a fancy word for basically making a spread, right? So you buy something low, um, you sell it off a little bit higher. Right, and you make the difference. Right? Okay, so that applies to real estate, and that's that's basically what wholesaling is in the nutshell, right? So you buy a property at a lower price, right? It has to uh, at a lower price. Then from there, you sell it off for a little bit higher of a price, right? Depends on other factors. There are other criteria and other factors in it, but th- in a nutshell, that's what it is. Um, starting off as a as a as a new wholesaler, um, a couple of things that. I would recommend, yeah, absolutely, read the book, right? Rich Dad, Poor Dad. You have to have the right mindset. Um, the mindset is the first thing that has to, that has to change. If the mindset is not there, you're not going to go anywhere, right? Um, we live in an abundance mindset, uh, an abundance world, right? There's an abundance of food. There's an abundance of money. There's an abundance of people. There's an abundance of, of resources everywhere you go. And if you look at the world in that manner, there's no stopping you. Right. So but if you're constantly, man, this is hard, man, this is uh, this is challenging, man, this is this is an obstacle that continually gets in my way. Where's that thought process going to take you? Right. Uh, either way, I don't want to explore it. So I don't want to know. So but, definitely uh, have like a or avoid the negativity. scarcity mindset. Yeah, right? you go. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> if you avoid that scarcity mindset, you change it to an abundance mindset. Your world will open up very quickly. Okay. And um, all of a sudden, it's like a snowball effect, right? First, it's very hard to get started, but then once once it happens, you just start feeling it, and you see it, and yeah. and, and and it just becomes attracted to you, and so on and so forth. So, um, you know, it, it, I buy into the law of attraction, right? Yeah. But I didn't realize that one of the keys for it was that the mindset had to be there first, right? That's <laughs> that's the whole thing. You have to you have to be able to uh, accept it. Yes. And that's and that's that's the key. Um, so. Rich Dad, Poor Dad opens up, unlocks the mind. It gets you gets you started and primed. Um, after that, by all means, do the research, right? Understand what wholesaling is because there are some legal consequences and there are some things that you have to know, some basics, right? You can't just go in there, I'll buy your house and and call it good yeah. right there, right? There, there, are, there is a process to it. Um, um, and then just continually realize that your goals have to be a part. So those are the three things that I would I would I would say, right? Obviously read the book to learn a little bit about the about the process and mm. three have your goals, right? Yep. Because with your goals it's gonna require it's gonna initiate action. Yeah, exactly. And if, you, if if you have goals, you write them down yeah. and, and you read all of the stuff and, and then take action. And yep. You get analysis paralysis, <laughs> you're not going anywhere. Right. So yeah. um, but if you have your goals down and, you know, on a daily basis, be like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Yeah. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Eventually you will do it. Yeah. So YouTube has a lot of videos, too. Great videos. Absolutely. A lot of local uh, investors, wholesalers here that have videos, podcasts that, you know, definitely. Mm-hmm. And what about um, networking? Networking. Yeah. Um, networking. Especially is, when you're first starting. Yeah. yeah. When you're first starting, by all means, know who's in your area. Yeah. Um, know who's in your area, who are the people that could possibly help you out, who are some of the people that have done it that are the resources, and who are the players in the game in the area. Okay. Right? Because if you come into – what I've found is that the, the more that you network and the more that you're around people that are in, in the same boat – the more they're willing to help you out, right? Mm-hmm. But it all, it, you know, it all, good thing here all depends, Phoenix. right? Here yeah. in Phoenix, we have a, a certain, a different market. Yeah, we have a different market, but uh, the good thing is everybody's, every, uh, for the most part, everybody's willing to help. Right. Um, everybody's willing to collaborate. Everybody's, you know, that, that's a great thing. We know a couple of the big dogs here, and they're always open to teaching. They always have free um, get-togethers that, uh, you know, that, you know, they send invites to. Sometimes they provide lunch for you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, you know, 
it's a great uh we're in the we're in the phoenix area for anybody that doesn't know we uh we're here in the phoenix area and it's it's great the yeah. uh, the big dogs that are here mm -hmm. they love to collaborate with uh and help out yeah. help out a lot yeah, yeah so and for you guys um your local azria um is usually the one that you would look azria is just a real estate investor uh hangout or group or meetup okay yep. right and so local azria is a great resource to yeah. get started right you're going to learn um, those are some of the people, some of the key people that provide information. A lot of the information is free. Usually the membership is very cheap, minimal, yeah, right? Very it's very cheap. minimal. I mean, and uh, they usually have a couple of meetings per month. So you get to know some of the people that are in the area that, yeah, that, are, that, are, that are in business, that are players. That, and you'll find out different type of investing styles when, when you have some certain con yep. conversations. Yep, that's right. Yep. Cool. So when you're first starting off, uh, and you're doing the research, you're starting to network. Uh, why don't you tell us, uh, you guys uh, tell us about your first deal, like what you went through, how you got it, and just, you know, a little background of it. I'll let Albert. Oh, you first. want me to go first? Yeah, okay. you go first. <coughs> My first deal, well, I'm, uh, I actually, the reason I got into real estate was because, uh, you know, I wanted to get into the wholesaling. Once I got into the wholesaling, I was okay. Well, you know, might as well get my license, have access to more stuff, um, and also be able to do you know traditional real estate and yeah. whatnot. So I got my real estate license, uh, and I during that process, I kind of put wholesaling in the back. You know, did my schooling, did all that stuff, got my license, got a broker, you know, all that stuff, and started doing traditional real estate. Then you know, about a year, year and a half later. Uh, I was like, okay, now it's time to get back into the wholesaling. So I started doing, uh, you know, when I started, I was doing um, bandit signs, doing uh, mailers. Uh, then I started doing um, uh, flyers, uh, and then eventually they had some, uh, you know, virtual assistants. Uh, well, when about two years ago, uh, I got my first deal as a wholesale client that wanted to sell a house. So uh, I was like, okay, what do I do next? Um, and that's when I uh, hit up my friend George Aplicano. Uh, George, I've known George for a while, too. That's, we used to work together. Right uh, this guy right here. Yes. Uh, I've known George for a while, and uh, I had seen him on Facebook, you know, I guess. Uh, and I always knew him as a loan officer. So I saw him, you know, walking properties. I was like, okay, I think he's got into the real estate game. So when I got the property, I called George. I said, look, George, I got a property. Uh, you know, what's the next step here? Help me out. You know, we'll split the deal. And we did. Uh, we went out. We got the deal under contract. Mm -hmm. Sold the property. Uh, we made about, we, about 19. 19. 19,000 on it. Um, and then from there, uh, our relationship bloomed. No, yeah, I'm just exactly. kidding. I'm just kidding. Like <laughs> so then from there, I, I, right? said, I told exactly. him that, well, you know something? We're, it seems like we're, in this, we're trying to you know, achieve a, a same goal. So I was like, why don't we just partner up and let's yeah. see if we can work together. And it was a good connection, man. Yeah. yeah. So ever since then, uh, we created Cash Now Homes. Uh, and um, we've been, you know, wholesaling and actually now buying properties and fixing. Yeah. Fixing and flipping. Absolutely. Which will be another episode. Yes. Right. So um, so for my first, uh, my first deal, um, uh, I was doing loans. I was working for a big bank. Um, you know, the one that's in America, right? <laughs> and um, the, I realized that, um, like, it wasn't working, right? I was like, my 401k was, eh, my, there, there's no pension there. There's no guarantees. Yeah. I'm like, mm, and my kids are about to start going to college. And I'm like, the, the future is, is that, you know, based off of the income that I was, the income that I was currently producing, I was like, there's no, there's no future here, right? The only way that I can, I can make, pay for my kids colleges is that I'd have to find another job as a part time or something like that or um I'd have to real, do something else right so once again I started noticing like you know the the lease options all these investors and so on and so forth um went through the rich dad deal um and uh clicked on something called wholesaling right I went, I looked up uh, somebody had told me it was it was called wholesaling and um looked online and uh, found a bunch of information, right? So um, when I found it, I, I got I was like, oh, it's really simple, right? Simple process. Call the seller, have them to agree to a discounted price on the property, then resell it to somebody else, 
Okay. It's, yeah. It's a very, very simple process. I was like, okay, so how do we get a hold of sellers, right? So back in those days, um, we I, there was a, a fisbo.com, F- fsbo.com, and those are for sale by owners, right? Yeah. Here in the Phoenix market now, that's completely saturated. A lot of you, a lot of people use it for advertising, so it's very hard to find a seller there. Um, they're still there, right? Um, but when I went to that that website um, and I spoke to the sellers, all of them wanted above like twenty percent above market price b- retail market price. So it was a very difficult conversation to have with them to try to get them dis- to discount their properties. And I was like, man. Uh, that that's that's unfortunate right so i kept on going through right um then i went to craigslist right so i went to craigslist um and i had a search um a search filter right i had a a, a little app called if if okay. right if this if this then that right so you know and what i did is i put a sh- search criteria with uh with uh with Craigslist, right? So I put in motivated seller, distressed, um, urgent, quick, all of those key words in there. And what it would do is it would, disca- it would cipher through everything inside of the Phoenix market and it would create a lead for me. And from there, I would just call those phone numbers, right? So I dialed and dialed and dialed and dialed. I talked to a bunch of sellers. Um, and eventually I got to one person that was interested, that was finally interested in selling um, for what it seemed like distress. So I walked property, so on and so forth. So when I uh, when I went, got the property under contract. Um, all of a sudden, I came to the realization: like, oh no, well, what do I do now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, great, I have this contract, and I I don't know what to do. Yeah, right. Yeah. And so at at that point in time, um, the networking opportunities were, were weren't like how they are now. Um, here in Phoenix. And so I started to reach out to real estate agents. I started to reach out to. Um, just anybody that I knew uh, within my even my Facebook group, I started looking at wholesale um, groups online, and I started bringing this deal to them and be like, "Hey, help, help, help!" Right. So I finally went to a, a, a meetup, uh, met another investor, uh, a good friend of mine, and he um, he basically said, "Yeah, yeah, I can, I can, I can get this done. It's 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 a thin deal, right? Because I got it at the wrong price. Mm-hmm. So that was one of the one of the major." issues that I had with it because I got out the wrong price. But um, the seller luckily was an investor. So he already knew kind of what the process was. So that helped. Um, Then he was selling off his property. He just wanted to cash out. He's already 75 years old. He was like, I'm done renting Mm -hmm. out houses. This is my last renter. Um, It needs some fixing and flipping. So I already know the process. I'm going to give it to you at a discount, but this is my price. Okay, great. So I got it under contract. I went over to my friend at the, at the Azria, and he's like, yeah, I can. I have some buyers and so on and so forth. And then from there, what happened was is that it was a daisy chain effect, mm-hmm. right? So we put in our fee. Then they sent it over to another another wholesaler. That other wholesaler had an end buyer. And so then they put their commission on top of it. Luckily, there was enough spread that everybody got paid. But it was it was still a small, thin deal. Yeah. It was a thin deal, as we call it, right? So, um, yeah, uh, my first deal, about 2500 bucks is what I made on it. But I made something. Yeah. And that's the whole thing, right? So <clears throat> gladly. It took me about 60, 60 plus calls to make that deal happen. Yeah. But it happened. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Right, exactly. You know, and so, um, and then from there, you know, just kept on doing it, walking properties, walking properties. I've been, uh, if you guys uh, follow my Instagram, my Facebook, I, I, I tell you all my stories of my successes yeah. and my failures. And that's how uh, Albert came into my life. And it's been <laughs> rainbows <laughs> since. <laughs> No, it's been a great, a great ride. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So, uh, from the actions that you took in your first deal, what are some things that you would have done differently, knowing what you know now? Okay. Um. So, when I, did you want to no, take no, this first? Okay. So, when I first started off, right, I, it was just it was um, it was rough. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> it's rough, right? You're you're learning something new, so you have to. You have to you have to grind it out. There's no better word for it, but you have to grind it out. You have to hustle. Yeah. You have to continually talk to people, get in front of people's faces. You have to continually just be like, "This is what I'm about. This is what I'm doing." Um, uh, and you have to make that mindset a part of who you are. Okay. Right. And and that's that's what I realized. Like, it wasn't so much the phone calls, and it wasn't so much about going out and talk and uh, talking to sellers, and it wasn't so much about um, doing the activities. It was it was a it was a path. Uh, 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 they call it a. Um, um, it, it was a path to get 
to where you needed to go. It's a the, the price of what yeah, I get it. Price of what was that? Was that saying? Um, uh, yeah, the cost of whatever initiation or whatever, right? So that's part of the initiation process. Yeah, you yeah. have to go through all that that the and, it, and it's not hard. It's just that one of those things is like your your mentality is it what's holding, it. your yeah, mindset's mindset. holding you back, yeah, right? Exactly. So when you're in front of a seller and you don't have that abundance mindset, you you're you're more focused on am I going to get this deal or am I not? Mm-hmm versus and, you know and getting at the wrong price right. because you want to get the deal yeah. instead of being like well no it does not a deal anyways right yeah you know you got and you're right you have to have that abundance mindset right and you so know. it's that whole entire process right so there there's a cost to it you have to pay that cost you have to you know you have yeah. to make the phone calls you have to walk the properties you have to talk to the sellers you have to do those things yeah. if you don't do them and all of a sudden you get your first deal easy and you think that this business is easy yeah. then all you're going to pay it later yeah. and it's going to yeah. come out come out worse right because <laughs> i know some other investors that they get their first deal right and then the, another year and a half later they they yeah, haven't they, done yeah. anything anything yet and they're out of the business yeah. so um, but yeah, I, so paid the price, right? Did the phone calls and all that. So now your question was, is that what would I do different, right? So I start off with Craigslist. Craigslist basically cost me nothing, right? Um, you could do the same thing on Zillow. Um, unfortunately, now with Zillow, they have their quick offer or something like that. So you are automatically in competition with Zillow yes, when you call yeah. some of the some of the sellers. Um, so there's there's a couple of different ways that I would do it, right? Um, the first thing is, is that you need leads. So in order for you to find distressed properties, um, there's this uh, there's this app, uh, this um, whatever, it's, a, it's, a, an, it's app. an app. Yeah. It's an app. <coughs> Excuse me. It's an app, and it's called uh, Property Radar. Um, it costs $80, right? But off of those 80 bucks, you'll get all the foreclosures here in Maricopa County, mm-hmm. right? And it will have phone numbers on it. Yeah. Right. Some of them are right. Some are wrong. There's probably six phone numbers to each lead, but it doesn't matter. If you want to get a deal, you're gonna call. You, you're gonna call. Mm-hmm. You're gonna dial exactly. for dollars. Dial, dial for dollars. Right. Exactly. So um, y- that's that's what I would do different because then from there I would be I would, my chances of getting a deal would be would increase. So um, I would do that first and then just get on the phones. Right. You'll learn about scripts. You'll learn about sales process. You'll learn about all that stuff later. But get on the phones because that that's the first yeah. uncomfortable part of doing this business. Right? Yes. All right. Yeah. Exactly. And that now we have different techniques yeah. and strategies to get deals and, and so on. But the reality of it is, is that you need to have those conversations with sellers because you're never going to avoid that yeah. no matter what. Yeah. For sure. All right. Awesome. Cool. Would you do anything differently with your um, first deal? Well, I mean – Besides exclude George. <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding. Okay, there's nothing about that. <laughs> no, <I'm> <laughs> no uh, when I well, see when I got into the wholesaling, it was even before I got my real estate license. Okay. So, you know, I was working in one of the big banks, um, and I said, "Okay, I'm going to start the wholesaling." So I started. Is that the know, one the in Fargo? Thing. No, 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 that's not, not that the one. one in Fargo. Um, is that the one that you have to kind of chase around? Yes, yeah, <laughs> yep. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so I started doing the wholesaling, and while I was did it, doing bandit signs and mailers, and you know, uh, I said I got my real estate license to, I guess, you know, get more access to the whole real estate, you know, MLS, comms, all that stuff. Um, and then I no, you know something. I, I mean, I just put in the time. I guess uh, I wish I could have known the stuff. A lot of the stuff that I know now back then. So maybe a little bit more research. Right? Yeah, even maybe. though you you probably did quite a yeah. bit, a little bit more would have helped. Yeah. your first deal. All right. Yeah, yeah, and um, sorry. No, go ahead. Go well, ahead. One of the things about it was is that uh, you know I did bandit signs as well. Mm-hmm. I did uh, I did bandit signs. I did cold calls. I did door knocking. Um, you know, I yeah. did all of those things. And, um, the funny thing is, is that one of the things that helped me was that I got with an invest, I got with an investor that already knew their stuff and they, they already had their trial and error and they were yeah. kind of teaching me, teaching go. me what was going on. So that's also another, the way that, 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 that would have been another, so finding yeah, a mentor would finding definitely, a mentor, right. Would yeah, help. right. Okay. But the mentor has to be open to it. Right. Yes. And, yeah. and so it's, it's one of those things, right? Well, it's not like you're going to force a mentor to right, do something. Exactly. Exactly. And, yeah. And it's gotta be, I mean, at the same time, it's gotta be a win-win for everyone. Yeah. For everyone. For everyone. Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah, and so um, you know, and, and, it, and it's funny, right? Doing the bandit signs. You, yeah. What was what was your experience with the bandit sign? Uh, you know something? I didn't really get anything with the bandit signs. I got more stuff from the mailers. Yeah, the mailers. Uh, I did just regular mailers, and then I did uh, the mailers that uh, you know, like <laughs> it's like there's a package waiting for you. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Those, um, that first deal that we got, uh-huh. that I got, that I partnered up with you, was from a mailer. From a mailer, yeah, right on. Yeah, so right. they called me and, uh, but uh, bandit signs, I had no, no success. Yeah, I had uh, a but. So with my bandit signs as well, we didn't. I realized my my mistake back in the day was uh, that I didn't put enough. Right, so yeah. I, I put out like three hundred bandit signs, and I got like four phone calls, all of them to. Take down the sign. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I realize like you know nowadays it's like okay, no, I wasn't four hundred. I need four thousand, right? Yeah. Four thousand oh, yeah, in order definitely. for the, those bandit signs. It's the numbers. Yeah. It so is. you know, but um, once again, those things cost money, right? And if you're new to wholesaling, yeah. yep, chances are you don't have a lot of money to invest. Um, all of the strategies work, right? Yes. So bandit yeah. signs work, mm-hmm. right? RVMs work, which is a ringless voicemail. That works. Text magic works. All that stuff works. Cold calling, all of it works, right? You just got to put the time in. Yeah. Every right. single one of them have a, a cost to it, and that cost is always time. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so um, now if you're so new, Whichever avenue you're working on, the more focus you put towards it, the right. more it's going to work. Yeah. Right, sure. exactly. So. Right, and then and then you'll realize throughout that process there's um, things that are more effective than others. Yeah. Right, and so you eliminate some of those things and you start streamlining your processes. Right, um, but yeah, if you're like a new wholesaler, I mean, it, like I said, you know, property radar, go in, get those foreclosures, start calling on those foreclosures. Right, once mm-hmm. you start talking to them, go to their property, so on, and go go to their property, start door knocking, start walking their properties, and see what you can do for them to help them out. Um, that's one thing. The second thing is is that if um, from that property radar um, data, um, you know, get the ones that are in your neighborhood and, you know, walk by those twice a week, right, at different yeah. hours. Yeah. Uh, drive by them. You know, it's not going to cost you a lot of money or a lot of time just to drive by those houses, see who they are. You know, based off of the tax records, you're already going to know their name, you know, and then you yeah. go up. Knock on their door. Knock on their door, and um, you know, and just introduce yourself. Right? Yeah. Yes. So you know, once uh, and and then go from there. Yeah. Yeah. I've done, I've done door knocking uh, with actually with real estate as well. Yeah. So it's fun, gotta, isn't it? Yeah. I, you, in Arizona in during the summer. Yes, <laughs> I did do it during the summer too. I have pictures of it too. Yeah. Uh, but it's not, you know, it's just I guess once you do it once, after that it's like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Once you get that, yep. once you get it out of the way, yeah, yeah exactly. it becomes easier. Yeah. 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 yeah um, where do we want to go from here? Cool. Um, 20, let's, let's go. Um, well, luckily I have things written down. Yes. Nice. yes. <laughs> <clears throat> um, all right. So let me just kind of finish off with the door knocking, right? So one of the things that, um, that you can do when you're actually in front of a seller is that especially, so say, for example, you get the foreclosure list. You call the sellers. They don't answer. It's right down the street from your house. You go and you knock on the door, right? One of the things is uh, if they answer the door, you don't want to be in there and go, I'm going to buy your house. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You don't. You're you're going to be a represent a manifestation of their problem, right? And yeah. They're in a true. foreclosure. They're in a foreclosure for a reason, right? They either can't make the payments. They're they're, they're, they're some sort of life event has happened, um, and something is causing pain, right? So when you go and you knock on that door, you don't want to you don't want to automatically be the solution to their problem because they're going to automatically have a defense. <coughs> So a couple of things that you can do to uh, deflect that, right, is that um, one of the first things and my favorite thing is always like, well, I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm here to buy. But, yeah. Right. That's an automatic deflection. Oh, you're here to buy. OK, well, then, you know, uh, let's let's talk Buy what. Right. Now, all of a sudden, when you talk about their house, then there might be more defenses that you have to go down. Right. Um, another thing is, is that um, when uh, a way to take down their defenses is that. You go in, well, I'm working for a local investor. Mm-hmm. I'm working for a local investor who's buying houses in the area. Do you know if any of your neighbors are interested in selling their house? Right? And then they'll be like, oh, okay, well, you know, I think Sandy down the street might be interested in selling your house. Okay, great. Can you tell me a little bit about her? Oh, I don't know. She has like three kids and or and her husband, I don't know, blah, blah, blah. They get they get into the whole story yeah, about yeah. them and this and that. And they'll be like, hey, have you ever thought about selling yours? 
Oh no 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 no! I'm not interested in selling mine. Oh, okay, well that that's fine. Well if you if if you don't if you do any time in the future, here's my information. Blah blah blah. After that, after you let it go for some odd reason, they come back and they tell you, oh yeah yeah, you know what? I thought about it, but what would happen if I actually wanted to sell yeah. my house? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's 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 a strange <laughs> it's a strange dance. It's a strange dance, but the more you let go of a deal, the more it comes back to you. I, I, I don't understand how that, that works. Once again, abundance. But um, it seems like it, you're not being confrontational, so you're letting them bring their defenses down and opening the idea to right. them. Right, yeah. exactly. Right, And you'll, you'll get those people that are like just not having yeah. it, but yeah. it's fine. Um, and, and make sure that when you do go door knock, you have some sort of contact information, a flyer, a business card, yeah, or you don't something on there. You don't stranger. want to. You, you want to make sure that you take advantage of every opportunity that you have. So um, when you go over there, they're not home. All right, leave the flyer. Right, mm-hmm. and then every yeah. every two weeks, come back see if the flyer's still there. If the flyer is gone, that means that they're living there, mm-hmm. right? And uh, and and then you just put it back up there again, right? Yeah, and yeah. Eventually, eventually they'll either call you or if not, you know, the house will just go and and be up for sale. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of the the free way of doing it and and that's you're going to have more success with those foreclosures mm-hmm. than you will a mailer other, or uh, right any any other any other way or whatever yes. right yep so um next thing is some of the good things about wholesaling sure yes right? yeah plus and minuses for tell us george tell us george oh yes <laughs> by all means let me go ahead and read this right <laughs> um so uh, pros and cons right so you you can make good money Right? Yeah, so that's that's, that's that's the reason why we're all here, right? Um, you make good money, and and what I, what I found was is that the money's good, and it, it's great. Um, the thing is, is that this is a vehicle that leads to other paths. Yeah, right. Agree. And um, and then that's that's kind of why we got into business because mm-hmm. we were realizing, well, we're making good money, right? So what are we going to do with the rest of our money, mm-hmm. right? Let's let's reinvest it. Yeah, let's reinvest it in our company. Let's reinvest it in ourselves. Let's reinvest it in properties, properties and and, exactly. and things like that. And and so this becomes a vehicle to other things. And so, um, you know, and I've done things that I've never never thought I would ever do. Right? I've raised capital. Yeah, uh, you know, like. Raise capital. I've uh, you know uh, online courses yeah. and and just like things that make you uncomfortable, the growth in in, in who you are. Yeah, uh, that's that's where you have it leads to. Get out of your comfort zone. Yes. Yeah, that's exactly. Sure. That's so sure. that's what this business has actually. That's that's where the magic is. is like, yeah. I mean, that's that's one of the good things. Yeah. So the money's great, but it's just an it's it's just an, a byproduct. Yeah. Right. It's a byproduct of the value that you bring to to people. So, um, then uh, the relationships that you build. Right. Yeah. So with networking and, and some of the people that we, we know in especially our Especially here, like I said, I was saying earlier, especially here in Arizona. Yeah. Everybody loves to give back, uh, you know, collaborate and give back. And uh, so it's it's great. Yeah, man. Uh, the, the people that we've met, um, they're amazing. They're yeah. amazing. Some of the investors that we know, they're just – it's an amazing group. And, it, yeah. and it's Agreed. and it's one of those things that you, you see everybody's success. You share their success. Yeah. And uh, one of my uh, one of my one of our, our, our buddies or whatever he got his, he got his uh, a plaque from yeah, another nice. investor because his goal was to make um, one hundred millionaires, millionaires. Okay. one hundred millionaires right he got his plaque one of one hundred yeah oh so, nice. yeah dude it was nice. awesome man yeah so so that shout is out amazing you know so um, it's it's amazing but that's the that's the group that we that, yeah. that we have and they're, right? all, and they're all like they w- worked separately but. Then and and like they say, they say it a lot. It's not competition; it's a collaboration. Yes, yeah, yeah. Exactly. we get together, and that's having an abundant right mindset. mindset. Right, we go further together than we do apart. Yep, right. We make more money together than we do apart. I agree, and it's amazing how that how that works. Yeah. So yeah, cool. Yep. So you want to talk about some of the some of the bad things, some, some of the pro- things, some of yeah. the cons? It's yeah. actual work. Oh, you want me to talk about the con? Yeah, uh, yeah it is so, actually yeah, work. So it is, it is. Uh, like I was saying earlier, you know, don't get... Uh, this isn't easy money. Mm-mm. Yeah, no, but... You don't have that mindset that it is. Right? Yeah, but it, but it's worth it. You know, it is good money. It is it is worth it. And, uh, um, so, I mean, like I said earlier, don't... Uh, there's so many, so much stuff out there that says, you know, come to our thing and you you know and there's sometimes there's people from TV mm-hmm. that have a show 
you know, here and they're not even there. They just it's just basically selling you a course. Right. Uh, I'm not saying that they're all bad. That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm just saying do your own research. Right. Uh, that's a big uh, you know thing that you got to do with uh, with the whole. Don't story. get distracted by the shiny things. Right. Yes, the exactly. Shiny yeah. Yeah. Exactly. 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 Uh, so that's what the, for me. That's one of the biggest ones is don't get distracted by the shiny things. Really good way to say it. Yeah. Um. You know. And yeah. I mean, there's certain people that you would. Right now, information is, is once again we're in abundance mindset, right? So information is available everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. You just got to look for it, right? Most um, of it is free. Right. Yeah. Most of it is free, right? So you can Agreed. find you can find contracts online. You can find um, you can find uh, title companies. Yeah. You can find, yeah. you can find all the title information. companies will help you with a lot of stuff. Right. Yep. You can find everything online. All your resources are online, right? So there's no real need to pay anybody to 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 do this. I'm saying this now, right? But Hey, we might have a conference soon. <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, no, but um, right, there's gurus out there and so on yeah. and so forth. They'll help you and they'll guide you because they give a lot of the free information for free yeah. at the beginning, right? But at the end of the day, they want you to pay for their education and so on and so forth. The majority of it is available. Yeah. Um, and I'm not knocking the gurus, right? Because the, well, obviously I, they're, doing, they're something doing something right. That's yes, why they exactly. Are. Guru, That's why they're exactly. doing it right. If you're yep. able to make somebody money. Right, they'll pay you to to go ahead and do it. So, yeah. um, but so some of the cons in, in in regards to this, right? So you're helping solve a problem. So for for me, the biggest thing is always the in, in regards to the sellers, right? You're helping to solve their problem, and and with that, there comes a lot of other things, right? It comes their families, mm -hmm. it, it comes other relationships that they they have within their circle, within their sphere of influence. Um, they, there's there's all kinds of title issues and there's all kinds of other things that happen with with these types of properties, right? Because you're buying a distress home. It's a stress for a reason, yeah. right? Either yeah. they haven't made payments or they haven't made the repairs or something, right? So either way, you're an answer to – you're a solution to that and you're going to help provide that solution. But along with it comes other things that yeah, happen, of course. right? So yeah. and then that's that's part of it, right? So you have to just be aware you're going to be taking on those responsibilities, and that's what they're going to be looking to you, and that's why you get paid because that's the value they bring. Yep. Okay. Right. So, so those are some of the cons because there are there are things you're going to be in constant contact with the seller. Um, there's certain things that they may not know, right? Like, oh, you have an HOA violation. What are you talking about? Well, you never pulled out the weeds in the front of your house mm -hmm. for two years, so they taxed yeah, you fees, on it, right? Yeah. And there's yeah. fees associated with it, yeah. right? So you got to you got to call the HOA, and you have to get a payoff. Right, you have to contact title. Title will call you to get the payoff, and so on and so forth. Sometimes it's not that easy, and then um, a lot of times they may not even want to do it. Yeah, because they they're they're done with the property, and they're like, here, you take care of it, and they may not want to do it. You know, I've been on conference calls to try to get payoffs. Yeah, right. It just it happens. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah. just be aware, you have to take you have to be willing to take that step, right? And yeah. and um, like I've I've uh, I, I I said right. What would you, if I had to pay you a million dollars, would you, if I had to pay you a million dollars to do this, would you do it, right? And then that's, the answer is, the answer should be yes, yes. right? So, so that's, in my mindset, every single time, whenever I do something, that's my, that's my yes, answer. Right, yeah. Would, if I pay, if somebody paid me a million dollars to do this, would I do would it? I do it? Oh, yeah. Absolutely, right? So, yeah. Yeah. Heck yeah. I'm Insert. Heck yeah joke at this point <laughs> yeah. right now, right? <laughs> Insert some sort of um, <laughs> right? <laughs> All right, cool, cool. Yeah, so um, uh, things, kind of some things to watch out for. Yeah. Right? yeah. What, what, do, what, do you, what do you have to... to yeah, know? no, yeah, that, that uh, I mean, you're always going to have, not, you're not always going to have that, but you're going to have, you have title issues also with regular uh, traditional real estate properties i mean sometimes you know uh but with traditional you're the sellers for the most part they already know yeah F with a um distressed property you know they could have gotten it and and you mentioned some good points that you know they, they can't fix it fix it they don't have the money to fix it uh there's liens um uh, you know and also other ones are you know sometimes people inherit properties mm -hmm. uh you know Somebody passed away, unfortunately, and uh, they inherited the property, and maybe that person was never paying the HOA. Uh, you know, there's so many things that that can that can go wrong. 
right. uh, once you get the contract. You know, the so, unknown. Yeah. yeah, the unknown. You need to be exactly. ready to face the unknown. Exactly. Right? You have to be ready, um, right? Sometimes you have to go through probate. Right, the probate deals. Probate deal, yeah. deals. You know, there's, there's, you know we've, we've gone through those, and uh, they're, easy, they're easy ones, and then there's difficult ones, you right. know. So yeah. uh, it, it all depends. But, yeah, those are your co- cons is, you know, you don't really know. Once you get the contract, there's so much more after that. Right. You don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And that's, especially if you're starting out, you have no idea yeah, so what some of the stuff is in the background. Exactly. So, and especially if you have not, if jumping into wholesaling is your first thing about real estate. You yeah. know, luckily we've been in the mortgage industry. Mm-hmm. Um, so we we have a background. If you're jumping new into it and you've never done with dealt with title lenders and stuff like that, um, you know, this is a good way to learn it actually. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, you know. Yep. Yep. And so, then, yeah, I mean, and that probate and and what probate is is that um, somebody passed away and then without title, a will, without a will, and then so title has to figure out where does that. Where does that property go to? Yeah, right? yeah. So Children, we, yeah, we, we had a seller that they didn't have the money to pay for it, right? They didn't have the pun- money to make it go through the courts, yeah. so that it can be reverted back, right? So, so we had the contacts, we had to the contacts, we had help the, them through that process to do it. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. So, um, you know, one of the things also as well is like inventory, right? So what will happen is is that you we created a pipeline, and, mm-hmm. and what happens is that um, some deals are thinner than other right and some deals are they call them fat deals some of them are, are thinner thin deals. right some are thin deals so what ends up happening is is that um you'll get properties and once you have that contract you may not be able to sell it right away right you you want to avoid that at all costs right so do your homework ahead of time if you're able to um you know get that property at a discounted price right from the very get-go that means you, you're going to get paid if you got the right price, yeah. okay, and you know sometimes you, the the right price is unknown because it depends on the market. Yeah. So what happens is that so say for example you get a contract and all of a sudden, um, you, you don't it's not selling to the two or three people that you know that are investors. What do you do at that point, right? So um, one of the things that really helped us out um, at the very beginning was that we reached out to all of our our network. Yeah. Right. We reached out to them. We were like, hey, we have this deal. We have this deal. We have this deal. And eventually, you know, people were like, oh, yeah, I can make this work. Or, yeah, yeah, I got this. Or, you know what? If you can reduce that one down by five yeah, grand, yeah. I'll buy it. Yeah. You know, or I have somebody that will buy it. I'll. But you got to make sure we got to do this. You got to do that. Yeah. So on and so forth. But they'll give you ideas that you never even thought possible. So even the knowledge. Yeah. So that what happens is that, OK, so it may not work on this deal. But on this deal over here, which is the one that's right around the corner, mm-hmm. they'll help out on or they'll do it or whatever. Yeah. You're like, oh, okay, now I know exactly what I can do. Okay. So things like that. It's just the knowledge that you get back is just – that's rewarding. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. Awesome. Yeah. So, so uh, you guys ready to wind it down yep. a little bit or you have more? No, let's wind it down. Yeah, okay. let's wind it down. Um, uh, uh, the last thing that I had was goals. That leads into us winding it down. So right. something that you should do um, as a beginner in the wholesale, <coughs> what are things that, that someone should do? You, know, okay. you just mentioned goals. Goal. Right. So just so that I can reiterate, right, yeah. um, the first thing is rich dad, poor dad, mm-hmm. right? The second thing is look up what wholesaling is mm-hmm. and all the, the, the just the baseline information on that. And the third thing is your goals. Okay. Yeah. Um, I write my goals down every single day and throughout the whole entire time when I started, when I started, I focused on them 100% because if my goals are not, if I didn't hit my goals, it was one of those things. It takes me one step away from where I need to be. Yeah. Right. So if I write, if I write them every single day and I kill those goals for the day, I am exactly where I need to be. Right. So, uh, goals are very important, right? Yeah. Uh, when you're starting off, you're not going to know what those goals are. You, 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 as far as monetarily, you may know, mm-hmm. right? But how to get there and the paths to get there is, is where the struggle is, right? So um, I made it very easy on myself when I first started. I was like, okay, well then, all right, my goal is X number of dollars. Um, in order for me to do that, I need to have at least 20 conversations today, yeah. right? I can easily have 20 conversations. Yes, right? yeah. So, and, and then from there, knocked off those 20 conversations. I knew that within one week of 20 conversations, 20 times five, yeah. boom, right? It, it actually something. comes out to 20 times seven. But um, 
by the end of that week, I know I've already accomplished something. Yeah. Right. And I'm one step closer towards my monetary goals. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, those three things right there will get you get you. Uh, it will create a solid foundation for where you want to be in in the future. Yeah. yeah. And what about you, Albert? What about goals? Uh, yeah, goals. Uh, well, my goals or, or uh, having a mindset like what? Yeah, definitely. OK, definitely having a, uh, the mindset. I think that's a that's a important uh, having the mindset because uh, honestly, in this business, um, you're gonna get shut down, rejected, and everything on a constant basis. You gotta really? take that out of your head and move on to the next. Mm-hmm. Uh, the people say it's a numbers game. It is a numbers game. Um, the more p- people you call, the more people you market out to, the more you know stuff you do, the more le- the more deals you're gonna get. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So so definitely the mindset, and um, I would say. Um, have a good uh, sales, sales uh, like a script. Yeah, script scripts. Uh, I would say um, sales process. Sales process, but uh, scripts and uh, practice your practice uh, when you practice back and forth with your you know teammates or what. Okay. Uh, role playing. Role playing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because uh, we <laughs> yeah. every single time we go out with a with a seller, it's never the same conversation. No, it's no. never. It's never, exactly. never the same conversation, and it's yeah. always um, yeah. Drill, the le- you gotta be prepared for that. So. <laughs> yeah. Drill your process down. Yeah, stick to it when yeah. you're with a, a client or something like that. Yep. Yeah. So what I took away from you guys is um, it, it's more of a, a motivational thing. So find someone that is motivational that you can follow, or or just get some not feedback, but like just inspiration from, yeah. um, there are motivational speakers out there that, you know, they talk in, in are religious about setting their goals, writing them down every single day. Oh, yeah. Um, sure. other ones where they're always talking about the mentality that you have, uh, and keeping a positive mindset and abundance m- mindset. So, uh, I would recommend, you know, uh, finding someone that would help you with that. Um, and yeah, I mean, okay. do you have any other final words? No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I take it you're just done with this. Yeah. No, 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 I'm good. I mean, I, 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 <laughs> yeah. So yeah, um, yeah, and and just to piggyback on, I will have a final word, and I yeah. seem to talk a lot. <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the scarcity mindset's not going to get you anywhere. No, nope. right? Yeah. And um, and I know that we've mentioned mindset already quite a bit on this podcast but it's a, because sometimes. it's a big part because it's a big yeah. part right yeah. because if if you're not at that right mindset you're you're not going to go there right yeah um so mindset and actions are going to be the two things that take that go hand in hand right yeah. um you we we've come we're creating our culture to be abundance mindset yeah. right it has to be it, it has to be a part of it because yeah deals are going to come and go and we've realized that deals are they're everywhere yeah they're 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 more than I had ever even imagined that yeah. there could be, yep. and um, and so then deals are never the issue, right? It's True. the issue of of okay, which ones are going to be the ones that best suit your needs, and exactly. what's, what's going to propel you t- closer towards your goals? Yep, so, agree. Yep. So keeping that mind in mindset, um, as we're winding this down, uh, we are looking for investors. So if you know somebody or you are an investor, you're looking to um, uh, you're looking for a property of something, mm-hmm. reach out to us. Uh, we're also looking to gain capital. So if you are a capital investor and you're looking into investing money into something, uh, Cash Now Homes, feel free, reach out. Uh, it's something that we're always looking for because, uh, you know, just trying to work together with everyone. Yeah. Right. Uh, George, if you could read the promos off and we'll Ooh, end promos. it there. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, first one is bought to, brought to you by Cash Now Homes. <laughs> Buy or sell a home fast in less than seven days. Call 602-975-3920 or go to Cash Now Homes. Oh, what, oh no, it's uh, cnhphoenix.com. Yeah. Um, and making we're making your home goals possible. So, Expanse Real Estate team. Uh, looking for your next dream house to buy or sell? Contact Expanse Real Estate Team at gmail dot com. Um, if you're looking for studio time to record a podcast, uh, stand up act, joke writing, or social media filming, that would be here. Yes. <laughs> Absurd Broadcasting at gmail dot com uh, for special uh, prices and to schedule today. So custom shirts, decals, and other items, and personal. 
uh, needs, uh, check out Redhead Printing on Facebook, uh, uh, redheadprinting at gmail.com. Use Amigos and save 10% on your next order. Thank you, George, we good? for that. Awesome. Yes. No, thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Mahalo. 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 <laughs> <coughs> Did we record, bro? Did we record? Yeah. One sec.